So why are there no rich Jehovah's Witnesses in the rank and file of Jehovah's Witnesses? Is that a question that you wonder about? All of the people that were in the Jehovah's Witness cult that I knew when I was in the Jehovah's Witness cult for 26 years of my life, from age 40 to age, from age four to age 30, when I had this soul opening, devastating depression where I almost took myself out with a bottle of pills, which is I think quite common in a very oppressive cult like Jehovah's Witnesses that seeks to control your every move and your every um, thought and your every action, and including what you eat, what you see in the movies, um, what you dance, how you dance, how you relate, sexually to other people, how you even commune with people, how you commune with people that you work with, indeed not allowed to commune with anybody you work with. So when we consider all these things, why are there no rich Jehovah's Witnesses? I mean, there could be some exceptions to that. I have never seen any rich Jehovah's Witnesses rank and file. I've only seen people who are very low income. We lived in the hood. That's when my mother found the witnesses. She lived in the hood in New York City, Harlem, USA. I'm not saying that everybody that's a witness is in the hood. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it tends to bring on board people who have a low income or people who are lower middle at the lower end of the spectrum of middle class income. And why is this? Because I believe that they have a promise that's especially for the hood. Um, and the promise is a paradise life forever on a paradise earth life forever on a paradise earth. So all the magazines that they show you, The Watchtower, The Awake, The Brochures, the all their books, the books for the children, because they begin indoctrinating the children at birth, actually before birth, because they tell you while the child is in the womb, read them the things because they want to indoctrinate them while they're still in the womb. All of these mo uh, uh, mind control mechanisms, the watchtower, the wake and so forth, they're all pictures. You go into an assembly hall, you're gonna see pictures either of a Bible scene, like Daniel or something like that, or you're gonna see pictures of a paradise earth. They're drawing this very beautiful picture for you. You're gonna live forever on a paradise earth. You're going to never get old. You're going to never have a money worry. Everything's taken care of. It's almost like casting a spell. You're going to be happy and prosperous. And look at all these pictures. And there's black people and white people and Chinese people and, and Spanish people. And they draw this utopian dream and they lure people in through this utopian dream. Now, if you already have a great life, why do you need a utopian dream? Yeah, well, I'm doing good now. I don't need to wait until the Battle of Armageddon, God's gonna you know, send Michael, the Archangel Michael, also known as Jesus, down here, do battle with Satan the devil. After they do battle, there's gonna be a thousand year period the thousand year reign of peace and prosperity. Then they're gonna do another where, where Satan has been cast into the abyss. Then they're gonna do another, he's gonna be in there for a thousand years. Then they're gonna let him out again for a final showdown. And then he's gonna get killed. And then everybody's gonna live happily ever after forever in a paradise earth. Just think about that. Does any of what I just said make any sense at all? Of course not. Now, if you're indoctrinated into it, you're not asking the question, does it make sense? You're asking the question of, oh, how can I get my head to be in right accord with what they're telling me? Because anytime you're in a cult and they're telling you how it is, continually telling you how it is, and you're not getting it or you're not agreeing or you're off and it's here, you're going to think something's wrong with you. And then you're going to start trying to fit in because you want to be like everybody else because you want to be accepted or you want to be part of the whole group and you want to be approved of you want to be a good Christian so you're going to try to fit in so this whole doctrine of there's not going to be rich or poor there's not going to be you everyone's going to have a beautiful home free that you didn't pay for because all the people will be wiped off the earth God's going to kill everybody and he's everybody they don't say it like that but that's what they're saying that god's gonna kill everybody 
and that the only people that are going to survive the Battle of Armageddon as if somehow magically, you know, you could be standing next to someone, that person will die, that person will be die dead. But because you're a Jehovah's Witness, you'll still be alive. They really believe this. They really believe that they are the one true religion. They really believe that everyone else will die and they will be the only ones to live. They really believe this. And that's once again through indoctrination. So you could feed this story to people who are not saying everybody in the hood is not savvy, smart, you know, ed, um, educated, um, or, or have a, a, because people in the hood, very, you know, street smart, yet they have a message that really appeals to a certain kind of person that's in the hood. Their message doesn't appeal to people who already have a great life. If you're wealthy, you're abundant, you're happy, you're joyful, you probably even wouldn't give a second thought or even look at Jehovah's Witnesses. So right away, it tells you that they are feeding on people who are somewhat disenfranchised, I guess you could say. Not everyone. This was my experience of being in the in the cult for 26 years. That's what I saw. I don't know if that's how it is all over the world, but I do know all over the world in the poorest of the poorest of the poorest places, you will find Jehovah's Witnesses thriving. And the riches and the riches and the riches of places, you won't find any witnesses, maybe. And not to say you wouldn't find any, because they say Prince was a witness. They say um, the gentleman, Larry Osborne, I think one of the singers was a witness. They say the Jackson family was a witness, but we all know the Jackson family is dysfunctional. We do know that. And we also know, I don't know if Prince was a witness or not, but they say he was and they say he went to the Kingdom Hall, but Prince kept on doing what Prince was doing until he let go of his body and lifted out of, lifted off the planet. So I leave you that, and I leave it with you in this with this intention. My intention is love. My intention is freedom. Free. If you are in that situation or that experience, excuse me, and you feel in your soul something's not right, listen to that. Heed it. Come out from among them. I'm going to use their same words on them because that's what they used to say about Babylon the Great. Come out from among them. I used to say that to people that were going to church. Oh, they're in Babylon the Great. Once again, that smug uh, superiority, that subtle superiority. I'm going to use that same wording, come out from among them. If you know that's not where you're supposed to be, you know it doesn't feed your soul. You know that someone's controlling your every move. You know it's cold deep down inside. Come out. I love you. God bless you. Peace. And trust me, there's a whole lot of folks in the ex-Jehovah's Witness community. <laughs> it's probably now more ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-JW community than there is still witnesses. Whatever it is, all I know is I'm free. And I invite you into your life of freedom, joy, and happiness. Hello, somebody. Peace. ValerieLove.com.